Mr. President, I rise today to speak on behalf of nearly 800,000 dreamers, young people who are brought to this country as children, who today are living in fear and uncertainty. As a result of the Trump administration's decision to end the DACA program, these young people are at risk of losing their legal status and, in fact, face deportation from the only home that most of them have ever known. And that home is the United States of America. This is one of the great moral issues of our time, and it is an issue that must be dealt with now as part of the budget negotiations. It cannot be kicked down the road any longer. We must pass the DREAM Act now as part of the current budget negotiations. Mr. President, in the last six years since the DACA program was established, these young people, again, people who are brought to this country as infants in many cases, were finally able to breathe a sigh of relief. For the first time in their lives, they could walk the streets of this country without fear, without worrying about being arrested, without worrying about being deported. Think about what it means to live in this country every single day, knowing that at any moment you could be arrested or deported. And what DACA finally did is give these 800,000 young people a legal status and a protection that they could go out and work, they could go to school, and they can serve in the United States military without fear. Mr. President, as we all know, tragically, on September 5th, 2017, President Trump announced the end of the DACA program through an executive order. President Obama had established it through an executive order. Trump ended it through an executive order. And in his announcement, President Trump noted, and I quote, I look forward to working with Republicans and Democrats in Congress to finally address all of these issues. As I've said before, we will resolve the DACA issue with heart and compassion, but through the lawful democratic process, it is now time for Congress to act, end of quote, Donald Trump. The President was right. It is time for Congress to act. It is time for Congress not to kick the can down the road. Our Republican President, Mr. Trump, told the Republican-led Congress to get to work on a DACA fix. And I say today to the Republican leadership, let's do it. Let us do it now. That is what President Trump asked you to do. Listen to him and let us do it. Not next month, not in March, but right now as part of the budget agreement. People are working on this issue now. We can come to a consensus. We can pass the DREAM Act if there is a political will to do it. And let us also be very clear, despite what some have said, this is an urgent matter which must be addressed now. Since President Trump rescinded the DACA program in September, more than 15,000 DREAMers have already lost their DACA status and are now subject 
to deportation. Each day, the Congress does not act. 122 people lose their DACA protections, 851 people each and every week. This is a matter of urgency, and we have got to act accordingly. But I want to assure my Republican colleagues that not only is this the right thing to do from a moral perspective, from an economic perspective, it is also exactly what the American people want. Nobody here is asking anybody in the United States Senate to rise up and to be extraordinarily brave and courageous. Why don't you just do what the American people want us to do? No profiles in courage are needed now. Poll after poll have shown that the overwhelming majority of the American people want to provide legal status to the dreamers and to protect them from deportation. From a political perspective, this is not a difficult decision. A Washington Post ABC poll from September 2017, a few months ago, found that 86% of Americans support allowing dreamers to stay in the United States. 86% of the American people support providing legal status to dreamers. This is not a tough political decision. Another recent poll conducted by Quinnipiac found that 77% of voters and 65% of Republicans support legislation to protect dreamers and provide them an opportunity to work, to go to school, and to pursue a pathway to citizenship. Another poll conducted by CNN last month found that by an 83 to 13 percent margin, Americans support efforts to allow dreamers to remain in the United States instead of facing potential deportation only 15% believe that DREAMers should be deported. Passing the DREAM Act is also in our national security interest. Former Secretary of Defense Robert Gates recently noted, and I quote, the United States faces extraordinary security challenges that are placing growing pressure on our armed forces. That is why we need legislation that will provide a pathway to citizenship for those immigrants who, among other attributes, are serving or have served in the military, whether they are in America legally or were brought here illegally as children." End of quote, former Secretary of Defense Robert Gates. In addition, just last week, three former Secretaries of Homeland Security wrote to House and Senate leadership expressing both their strong support for a DACA fix and for the urgency of acting now. Secretary Chertoff, Napolitano, and Johnson warned of the need for Congress to act immediately and emphasized how the agency needs time to implement a new program. Without it, they cautioned that the delay will sow uncertainty in the business community drive undocumented individuals further into the shadows with immediate deportation looming for tens of thousands every single month. Let us be very clear that when we talk about the DACA program, when we talk about these young people receiving legal status, these young people are vetted, they pay a fee, and the vast majority of them are now at jobs important to our economy. They are in school or they are in the military. In order to get DACA status, they could not be convicted of a felony or a significant misdemeanor or pose a threat to national security or public safety. 
as almost everybody recognizes. These are fine young people who we should be very proud of and not talking about deporting them. DACA gave these young people a shot at the American dream, and having been given that opportunity, they seized it. And they are excelling and contributing to our country, to their country, in so many ways. With 91% of DACA recipients in the workforce, they play an important role in our economy. Many hundreds of dreamers have taken up the call to serve in our armed forces. Can you imagine a young dreamer now serving in the armed forces, putting his or her life on the line to defend this country, and then reading about members of Congress who think we should deport them? How outrageous is that? Furthermore, there are some 20,000 DACA recipients who are currently teaching in our schools. We desperately need good teachers. And 20,000 DACA recipients are doing just that. Yet, because of President Trump's cruel decision to rescind the DACA program, as well as the Republican-controlled Congress's failure to act, these young people's lives and livelihoods have been thrown into chaos and uncertainty. Mr. President, it is our job to enact a legislative fix now. The President has called for a fix. The vast majority of the people of this country want to see a fix. A fix is important to our national security. It is the right thing to do. Let us do it. Mr. President, I am, however, very concerned that President Trump is using the 800,000 Dreamers as a bargaining chip to force the taxpayers of this country to pay for an $18 billion wall. An $18 billion wall. Now, some may remember that during his campaign for president, Donald Trump told the American people that it was the Mexican government that would be paying for the wall. Well, it turns out that it didn't quite work out that way. And now it is the taxpayers of this country who are supposed to pay for a wall. Mr. President, let me be as clear as I can be. We cannot and we must not hold the lives of 800,000 young dreamers hostage in order to fund a wall that the vast majority of the American people oppose. We cannot and we must not allow Donald Trump to shut down the government to fund this wall. But that, it appears, may very well be, for whatever reason, what Donald Trump wants. Let me remind my colleagues what Donald Trump said last August at a rally in Arizona. Here's what he said in Arizona, your home state, Mr. President. And this is what he said at a rally, quote, Believe me, if we have to close down our government, we're building that wall. August 22, 2017, Donald J. Trump. Now, Mr. President, I do not know why Donald Trump may be pushing for a government shutdown. Maybe he thinks it will work well for him or will work well for the Republican Party politically. I have no idea. But I do know that the idea of a government shutdown is a very bad idea. And maybe 
Republicans will gain from it. Maybe Democrats will politically gain from it. I have not a clue. But what I do know is that the American people will lose from a government shutdown. And in a bipartisan manner, we must do everything we can to prevent that shutdown. A shutdown would harm tens of millions of Americans who would be unable to access vital government services. It would disrupt the lives of hundreds of thousands or more federal employees who depend upon a check to provide for their families. And in fact, it would endanger members of the United States military who are putting their lives on the line to defend our country. The United States Congress has a responsibility to the American people to prevent a government shutdown and to work in a bipartisan manner to reach a budget agreement that is fair and which addresses the very serious problems facing not only DACA recipients, but the working people of our country. So I say to my Republican colleagues, you control the White House, you control the U.S. House, you control the United States Senate. You have a responsibility to govern for President Trump and the Republican leadership to allow DACA to expire without a new program in place is not only a failure to govern, it is an act of extraordinary, extraordinary cruelty. We know that President Trump wants to build a wall, I guess somewhat like the Great Wall of China. Problem is that building walls may have made sense in the 14th century, but I would inform the President that technology has somewhat changed since then. And our job is to provide strong border security in the most cost-effective way that we can, and that way is not building a wall. And ironically, while the President wants to spend $18 billion to build the wall, he is taking money away from other far more important and effective border security measures. Let me quote from an article that appeared in today's New York Times, quote, the Trump administration would cut or delay funding for border surveillance, radar technology, patrol boats, and customs agents in its upcoming spending plan to curb illegal immigration, all proven security measures that officials and experts have said are more effective than building a wall along the Mexican border. The wall also has become a bargaining chip in negotiations with Congress as lawmakers seek to prevent nearly 800,000 young undocumented immigrants from being deported. But security experts said the President's focus on a border wall ignores the constantly evolving nature of terrorism, immigration, and drug trafficking." End of quote. In other words, if we want strong border security, if we want to keep people out of this country who should not be coming into this country, if we want to keep drugs out of this country, building a wall is not the most cost-effective way. May have been a great idea in the 14th century in China when they built their Great Wall, but it is not a great idea in 2018 in the United States of America. So let me just conclude by saying that we are at a very important moment in history. And if we do not do the right thing here, if we do not do the moral thing, if we allow some 800,000 young people, people who have spent virtually their entire lives in this country, who know no other country, who see the United States of America is their home, if we betray them, if we take away their legal status, if we allow them to be deported, this will be a moral stain on this country that will never, 
ever be wiped out. Mr. President, thank you, and I would yield the floor.